Hello and welcome back to Spartan Student version 9. Today we are going to be going through tutorial number 4 which covers spectra, properties, and graphical models of organic molecules from our database, the Spartan Spectra and Properties database. To get to that tutorial, as always, you will click the activities menu, then click tutorials, and select the fourth tutorial here. So I already have the PDF open in another window, and I'm going to go ahead and get started by sketching limonene. In the last video, we built that structure in 3D, and today I'm going to quickly sketch it in 2D for you. Clean that up, bring it into 3D, and you'll see we've made limonene. But what we're going to do is click on the name limonene here at the bottom right of the screen. And then we're going to click replace. And what we've just done is pulled a copy of limonene from our database, which has already had calculations run on it. So we can look at some calculated data here. I'm going to click on the spectra panel to bring that up. And then I'm going to add the calculated 13C NMR spectrum and you'll see different shifts at these different peaks which correspond with one of the carbons that builds the limonene structure. Now I'm going to add the experimental data. It's going to pull this from the NMR shift database. Okay, and now that that data has loaded in, we can see how the shifts that would come from an NMR machine might match with the shifts that we've calculated in Spartan. So the blue lines will represent the experimental, and the red lines will represent the calculated. So you'll see there's a bit of a deviation there, but pretty closely matched. You can also zoom in on any of these. And if you would like to reset the zoom, you'll click this cancel zoom button. All right, so we're going to close out of limonene and the next one we're going to take a look at is indigo. and. I believe that last time I built that in 3D. So for some variety today, I'm going to do it in 2D for you. All right, so I've just added all the double bonds and now I'm gonna add the nitrogens the oxygens, clean that up, and you'll see we've got an indigo molecule now. So I am going to replace this with a copy of it from our database. And then what I'm going to do is open the spectra panel again, and we are going to take a look at these hydrogen shifts where the coupling constants are set to zero. And you'll see that each of these is actually a double peak, which represents two hydrogens with an identical shift. Now, if I wanted to take a look at the individual shifts, we would do that like this. I'm going to zoom in here. Okay, we're going to close out of indigo, and next we're going to look at trans still bean which you may remember from the second tutorial. This time I'm going to go ahead and build it in 3D by selecting benzene 
double clicking. And now what I'm going to do is add a carbon here. I'm going to drag here to rotate the bond and add another sp2 carbon there. And then we're going to click benzene and add it to the open valence here. And you'll see we've got trans still being. So I'm going to replace that. Go into view mode. And we're going to take a look at the IR spectra. So I'm going to open the spectra panel again. Click this add button and look at the calculated infrared spectrum. So you'll see these different points of intensity here. We'll see one there, another here, and some smaller peaks this way. Now I often find it difficult to drag across the spectra plot since there are so many peaks. I like to use the table and then if we wanted to look at, for instance, this peak at 747 inverse centimeters, we could do that there. Or this one at 1478 inverse centimeters. And this max peak at 3046. Now, if I were to deselect this, close that and add the experimental IR spectra, move this out of the way and zoom, we can see how these match up. So not a perfect match, but very closely correlated. All right, we're going to close out of transstilbene and I'm going to sketch nicotine in 2D. First, I'm going to select a benzene. Then I'm going to select a cyclopentane and drag that away there. I'm going to grab carbon and draw a methyl group coming off here. And lastly, select nitrogen and double click on this carbon and this carbon, clean it up and bring it into 3D. Ah, so you'll notice that there's an issue with the chirality here. So we have grabbed the R stereoisomer, but what we want is the S stereoisomer, which is nicotine. So what I'm going to do is go to Edit Build, and I'm also going to click the Model menu and toggle the R S chirality labels on so that you can see here there is an R. What I'm going to do is hold the control key. This would be command on a Mac. And then I'm going to double click on this chiral center to invert the chirality. And you'll see we've got nicotine. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace it. And now we've got the nicotine from our database. And we can go ahead and look at some of the data there. So what I'm going to do first is look at an electrostatic potential map by clicking this surfaces icon, add and electrostatic potential map. It's going to compute this on the fly, give it just a second to calculate, and you'll see you can click this checkbox, and we've got an electrostatic potential map here. Now what I'm going to do if I want a quantitative value is click on the surface, right click and click properties to open the surface properties panel. And then I'm going to reset the minimum and maximum values to the absolute calculated min and max values of this map. So now you'll see we can see more of a stark difference between the more positive and negative regions. And if I wanted to click here on a very negative region, for instance, you would see the value reported as negative 197.2 kilojoules or on a more positive region 60.7 kilojoules. Now if I wanted to bring in the legend here it'll give you a scale on the left showing the absolute minimum and maximum and then you can click at different points on the surface and it will give you a reading there. 
Now you can also change the style of the map using this style menu or alternatively by using this drop down menu if you don't have the properties for the surface open. But I'm going to do it from within the properties panel and I'm going to switch it to transparent and you can see the structure underneath and you can do the same with mesh gives a bit of a different flavor of the map or dots okay so we're gonna close out of nicotine and move on to NN dimethyl aniline this one I am going to build in 3d I've already got benzene selected so I'm gonna double click I'm going to add an sp3 nitrogen to this valence and two sp3 carbons to the open valences of nitrogen and we've got nn dimethyl aniline to replace from our database and we're going to take a look at a different surface the local ionization potential map this time so i'm going to click surfaces and add local ionization potential map let that compute for a split second and we've got our map we're gonna click on the map right click click properties I'm gonna reset these ah that's a nicer picture and so this map will tell you the energy required to remove an electron from a specific location on the map um, as a function of its location on this electron density surface. So for example, we've got a 10.86 approximately electron volt there and in a more positive region a 17 there. All right, so we're going to close out of this, and I am quickly going to sketch our next molecule, androsterone, which you may remember from tutorial two. Can I add the oxygens a little earlier than I did last time, and the hydrogens? that and we'll bring it into 3d we've got androsterone I'm gonna replace it with one from our database for the calculated and we're going to click on orbital energies this time so if you were to click on any of these lines you can get a look at different orbitals. So this would be one above the LUMO, this will be the LUMO, the HOMO, the highest occupied molecular orbital, and then some orbitals just below that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is generate a surface. We are going to take a look at the LUMO map here. And turn that on. So this will give the absolute values of the LUMO. And I'm going to open the properties here. And OK. I'm going to set that. And so everywhere that's red is going to be zero. There's nothing going on with the LUMO there. And if you look at this blue region here, you'll see that there is some action there as well as here. And if I were to change the, let's do it from down here this time. If I were to change, you could see that it closely overlaps with this carbonyl is where the uh, the LUMO is. Okay, so we're going to close out of this and that's going to be the last molecule that we look at today. Next time we're going to look at 
spectra properties and graphical models of these organic molecules from quantum chemical calculations. So instead of pulling things from our database, we're going to run the calculations. I will see you then.